give a warm welcome for Colleen Carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I have two video. I think I have two on now. All right, great. So uh, I wanted to go over first the three T's. Um, this is a Cardone Ventures um, or a Brandon Dawson concept. Who here has ever seen the three T's? Okay, great. Because we're going to actually speak to your marketing campaign from these three T's, okay, which is your transactional, your transitional, or transformative. These are the three T's of, uh, with Dawson. I'm going to bring up the definitions now. Um, let's look at transactional first. because And I wanted to go over these three T's because I wanted to kind of say, let's look at like that your marketing program, how let's you're going to kind of dial yourself back in time to maybe it used to be okay to where it is now and where Bobby and Buck are trying to take you to. So if we that's the kind of way I want to look at it because you can kind of see this is a journey. It's a business journey um, that where the Cardone Ventures and AMI is taking you through to take you to another level. So if I look at something which is transactional, which is learn and do, focus on granular repetitious and consistent actions that will drive immediate results. Okay, so I know that Mike and I have been in business for a long time. I know that um, a lot of you guys have been in business a long time. Do you guys remember the blood pressure screenings at CVS? Remember? Run out. We don't have enough new patients. Run to CVS and do a blood pressure screening. Get some patients. Right? This is very transactional. Right? We train somebody up. We send them out to CVS. Go get a few patients. They're back by the pharmacy. Do some blood pressures. Get some patients. Okay, this is re repeating its granular, repetitious, consistent actions that drive immediate results. It's probably the key right there. It's transactional. It's you do it once, you get a result, and it's done. Okay, so if you can think with that, I know that because uh, we were Singer clients a really long time ago, a lot of David's stuff was very transactional. It was like, do the screening and get this thing. Do this and get this. It's just, it's just common among consulting companies that that's how we all kind of started. Let's talk about transitional, okay? This is improve and grow. I think most of us in this room have grown up out of transactional, and we've really grown into more transitional, okay? This is focusing on strategic actions that will make the most significant contribution to the next growth cycle of your business. We wouldn't be in this room if you guys weren't big enough that you could actually think further out than a week or a day on your marketing or anything in your office. You guys think bigger. You're probably thinking as far as a month or as far as a quarter goes, okay? More transitional, improving and growing, looking at things on a broader scale, looking at things. I know AMI teaches the 12-week um, perpetual marketing plan. You guys all have some version of that in place, which means you don't wake up every Monday morning and say, do I have new patients on the books this week and what am I going to do? That's transactional. You guys are looking into your future. You're putting TV campaigns in place. You're putting direct mailers in place. You're doing dinner talks that you have to schedule out a month from now. Okay, this is more transitional. You're looking into the future so that you can grow and you're actually kind of forward planning. Oh, it's in the workbook also. Now let's look at transformative. This is where Cardone Ventures and AMI are taking you now to become transformative. Okay, this is a whole nother level that I've actually, I've not particularly seen anybody really get to this level to the magnitude that Buck and Bobby are going to take us to, at least the concept to this weekend, right, of more transformation, transformative. This is to master and duplicate, to focus on casting vision and harnessing the drive needed to make your ultimate business goals a reality. So this is a whole nother level, okay? You look at somebody like Target, they're transformative in their industry. Okay, no matter how you slice it, whether you like them or not, the pharmaceutical industry is transformative. Okay, they work at this level. Now, Bobby and Buck are here this weekend. The beauty of these two together, I think you started it, Bobby, is that Bobby's been in the, has had a practice himself, a monster cash practice in Denver, right? Oh, yep. And you were the marketing person for, you, you're the one who made that thing a monster practice, right? You've done all of these yeah, I trained the staff to run it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, so he's been down in the trenches. He's the one that all these years has been into the marketing. Buck comes to us from corporate, the corporate world. It's not a world any of us ever circled in. So bringing these two minds together and bringing their data together, they can actually take us to be transformative practices. And that is exactly where AMI and Cardone Ventures are going together. I know that um, Buck mentioned about the marketing company. Okay, I know I've been in on some of those talks. Really incredible. 
And he says the company that, now this is Cardone Ventures who's striking this deal because these types of companies don't work with individual practices. They don't even work with like three or four practices. They work on such a huge level that they only want clients with huge amount of resources. And Cardone Ventures has that ability. So Brandon is actually able to strike that deal for Cardone Ventures, which anybody who's in the, the Cardone Ventures AMI grouping has access to this marketing company. It's really, it's really incredible what they're gonna bring to us. It will be, well, tons of the aspects you guys are speaking about this weekend, they're gonna be able to pull it all together. I even think there's gonna be, a, I'm not sure there's a CRM involved in it. It's gonna have a whole dashboard, like all the best working ads at a moment's notice. You see the headlines that are working, the colors working, the copy that's working. And so on the fly, and you click a button and it'll deploy those assets, whether it's print or digital. It's literally, and, it, and what it's, they'll- It's like, like literally like Starbucks level where all the local Starbucks, regional Starbucks have this access to this database that know what's crushing it in their area and they deploy those campaigns. And it's gonna be different in North Carolina than it is in Oregon. And so they have that resource. And so that's what they're building for us, which I just got chills because that's very <laughs> exciting. Just to be able to yeah. see all that and actually know all the data. Yeah. Well, I think the beauty of it is because I listened to your guys' pain points that- we're no different than you guys. We have the same pain points in Chattanooga. Okay, and we were talking about, Buck was just talking about marketing specifically to lists, right? And Shalyn is like, do we have the lists? They're in so many places, right? We have them for years. And we actually have, whenever we did symptom surveys, you know, remember doing a dinner talk, you did your symptom survey? We would take every symptom survey and we would actually log the person down with all their symptoms. There's just, it's on Google, ad, I don't know, it's Google Drive or something. Yep. It is, she's like, I don't even know where to start. There's so much of it, All right? Because we really, we really need somewhere to organize, which I think would be a CRM, right? That these things, people yeah. get tagged. And also if there's, once this deploys, we'll find actual outsourcers that you could hire that will take your spreadsheet data and import it in there just to make it live. To make it, yeah, that would be. So a lot of us, you guys have to be the same way as us. You must have enormous amount of data and names and you just can't sift through it enough to put any order to it, to hit any magnitude of impact to impinge on your public. That's, I mean, we have the same problem as you guys because we've been in business so long. So this transformative type of thinking, okay, is handling that kind of stuff. It's taking your business to a whole new level and a whole new level of professionalism that you're actually combining the, the, when we think of marketing, I, you know, we can get very, go back here. No, it didn't go back, Bobby. Transition, we can get very transitional and transactional, okay? I can tell even by the questions in the room. All right, where'd it go? Okay, there, the questions in the room, right? What Facebook company do you use? Does it work? Oh, I'm gonna hire them. It's super transactional, right? It doesn't, it's not even in context of your office. It's like, oh, it works for you and you happen to be in Kentucky? it'll work for me in California. There's that, all of us have that assumption because what we do is when we look at the, some of these companies, we look at these companies transactional. We'll say, Aston will say to me, hey, it works for me. And I go, oh, I'm gonna do it. That's just purely transactional. If it works for him, it must work for me. I'm gonna hire him. When it doesn't work, then that transaction went bad and I lost money. I think we're all familiar with that kind of stuff. When we take it up to, did I go to one more? Transformative, this is where you actually, Aston would tell me about his company. I'd say, great, give me all the data. Perfect, I'd get on the phone with the company. I'd ask him about the success they've had in our area, specifically in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'd ask him specifically how they're going to target the market that I want, because his market could be totally different than my market. So I would actually be able to look at companies from a bigger viewpoint on what is it that we actually deliver in our area and how does this company that's done well for somebody else, so that's a plus, how is this company going to be able to fit into our product that we deliver, our patient journey in our office? And that's when you get more transformative. And I'll go, I'm gonna go a little, I'll get a little bit deeper into this because I'm, I'm keeping this context right now as far as marketing goes. A transformative business, okay, is, is not just marketing. I'm looking at your business transactionally now. When I just talk marketing, that's a transactional thing. Okay, but I wanted you to be able to see how in marketing you could be transformative by looking at a when a company comes along or a concept comes along or a TV ad comes along, okay, that you actually look at it in the context of your whole business to see if it's a fit, not just a drop it in, pay for it, it worked or didn't work, or you work it until you kill it. Do we all know that one? Run those ads till they die, right? Very transactional. 
you laugh, Bobby, but that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go quickly through examples of transactional marketing encounters or programs. Um, marketing campaigns are run independent from the patient experience in the office. Uh, I think Brandon spoke to this once. I know I've, Bobby speak to this and Buck speak to this. Um, you put an ad out that you're a, um, a, a friendly, family friendly office, okay? Um, and then the patient shows up with their six kids and you say, you can't have your kids here. You see, you just marketed to the public, you're a family-friendly office, and when they showed up with their family, you told them they couldn't have their family there. So transactional marketing is putting out marketing campaigns because the person who runs the Facebook campaign or the TV campaign says, hey, I get the best results with this campaign, and it happens to say family-friendly, and so you go, run it, because I want new patients. Well, you're telling the public you're something, and when they arrive in the office, you're not that thing. That's a complete disconnect. It's a very transactional type of marketing. Another example would be marketing campaigns make promises that may or may not be possible to fulfill within the office. I know I was going through, I think I was looking at um, a company for AMI um, to be able to bring, to, a vendor to bring on to AMI. And they showed me some ads. And in the ads, God, I can't remember what was in there. But it was very, he's like, this, we have some AMI clients. They run this ad. It works really well. And I looked at it really close and there was some service in there. I can't even remember what it was. And I go, I don't think any, I think it's like mindfulness. I go, I don't think any, very few of my clients have mindfulness programs. This is where you have a psychologist on staff or you meditate, right? Maybe you have yoga for them, like some of the mindfulness programs. I go, I know a few of the clients have it, but you're telling me most of our clients use this ad? And he, he goes, yeah. And I go, did they actually read it close enough to see those lines? And they go, well, they're supposed to read their ad copy. And I go, I'm thinking they're not. And here would be an ad that would make a promise, right, in the ad, but it's not possible to fulfill. Now, for him as a, as a maybe the Facebook guy, I can't even remember what company it was, or it was postcards, this, this guy was getting good results with this ad. And part of that ad was that there was mindfulness in the office. And if you don't look at your ads close enough, you would be surprised the words that get thrown in there because the marketer wants to get patients in your door. These Facebook companies, direct mail companies' job is to push patients in your door which means they're gonna use whatever words it takes across the country that have been successful for them. Doesn't mean it's successful for you. So a transactional type of marketing is to say things in your ads that you don't quite deliver or that are not quite right. And when somebody comes in for that thing, you don't have it to offer. So that's an example of transactional. Another one is marketing campaigns are created without consideration of company branding. I think this is a big one. Uh, we talked about this at the 10X 360, is that a lot of us have Instagram posts, uh, a lot of us have Facebook ads. A lot of us do flyers for dinner talks. A lot of us do mailers. And if you laid them all out, none of them look alike. They're different colors, different fonts, different words. They, they explain your office differently. That's more transactional. Just creating marketing campaigns in like isolated bubbles and not in relation to your whole marketing department. Uh, transitional, I actually just moved right on to, tra to transformational. Like what would be the ideal scene? Because I think what Bobby and Buck are presenting now is they're presenting concepts that take you to this ideal scene. So a, a transformational marketing encounter or program. Marketing campaigns are crafted to translate through words, pictures, and videos, your unique patient journey that the patient will experience once in the office. A warm, friendly environment, okay? That would mean your front desk is staffed enough to exude a warm, friendly environment when they show up, okay? So you're, you actually have to look at your patient journey in the office and make sure that your marketing, whatever the words are, the videos are, the, the, the colors in your marketing, exude the same emotions that happen in the office, that they will experience in the office. Marketing campaigns will make promises that your office is highly qualified to fulfill. I know some guys say, hey, listen, I'm going to just market a bunch of stuff so that I look like I offer a lot of stuff. Um, but I know that I'll never offer it. I, like, we're never going to recommend it or deliver it. I've heard that many times. I think one of them is, the, is uh, bone marrow aspirate. Hey, I'm going to offer bone marrow ma aspirate um, because it makes me look more medical, but we're never going to do it in our office. So see, that's deceptive. So you want to make sure your marketing campaigns make promises that your staff is highly qualified to deliver. So when you're highly qualified to deliver, remember this, all the staff can speak to those services. So if somebody came in because they didn't want to use uh, stem cells from another human being, 
So therefore they wanted bone marrow aspirate. And they arrived in the office and they said, yeah, I'm so happy there's an office around here that can, can deliver bone marrow aspirate. And your front desk goes, what's that? And they go, well, you know, it's, that, it's where you're gonna get stem cells from my own bone marrow. And they go, I don't think we do that here. Do you see that disconnect? So you wanna make sure what you're promising in your marketing campaigns, your whole staff is qualified to speak to those services. The last one is marketing campaigns always follow the branding, fonts, and colors of your office. The colors that invoke the emotions that relate to your unique patient journey. Now, I'm not an expert on colors. You probably are better than I am, Bobby, but I can tell you my story, and Mike can attest to this. You guys all know I like to decorate. So we had an office in Pennsylvania, and I was getting tired of the blues and the browns and all that kind of stuff. And so I said, I'm gonna change the colors. And I was into this black and silver, okay? So I painted all the walls gray, got rid of everything that was blue. We put black and silver in the office. And it was just gnarly. <laughs> the patients just came in and they, the, the irritability level just went up. Because what I didn't recognize was that we brought in people in pain Can you hear me? All right. We brought in people in pain. They needed help. They wanted professionalism. They wanted comfort. And we might as well have been playing rap music back then because literally it was silver and black. And every, we even had black shirts on. We looked like a hair salon is what we looked like. Within about three months, I said to Mike, I think this was a really bad move. We got rid of all the black and all the silver and brought back the navy blues. It was like just the tone level in the office went back to caring, professional, and helpful. So I don't think I would have believed the color thing as much as if I had not made that mistake myself. So we, we use the Cheskin Institute for Colors, but you can go online. It's very easy to go online and put the colors of your office and see what it elicits because you want to, the emotion that colors elicit is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. That's why AMI is blue. I can tell you that right yeah. now is because it elicits professionalism, I think. Yep, and it's uh, authority. Authority, okay. Which when, you're, when you're in pain and you go to a doctor's office, you want somebody to take authority over your care because you can't handle it. You're out of control. And that's what that elicits. Yeah, massive survey did green. So different hues of green, sage green. That's health and help. Mm -hmm. Purple is more knowledge. And so if you have a different consult room where they want to go in and it's for referrals or you're going through and doing a talk, purple, that I, I really? wouldn't recommend it because it's so dark. Well, Autogy did purple. Brandon yeah. did all purple in yeah. Autogy, yeah. And it feels knowledgeable when you're in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Orange was a very safe one. So uh, even, uh, like, I would paint my office, change it every couple weeks, just experimenting after what I learned. And there was a Benjamin Moore color called Mandarin Orange. And with soft incandescent lights, that created the softest, warmest, safest environment for a console and report of findings. Wow. Did you paint the walls Mandarin Orange? Yeah. Wait, a, a light shade, I'm assuming. Yes, light. Okay, light. We're talking light mandarin orange. Behind a front <laughs> desk was a, a scarlet red, and that sparks conversation. And so that area, in contrast with the other areas of the office, that's where people would converse. Mm -hmm. And then when they came back into the area, suddenly they're safe. Now we can go and get some treatments. That is amazing. Yeah, we didn't go that far. We just picked our blues, our different levels of blues and browns for the office is what we did. And we're... Yeah earth like you know hardwoods that kind of stuff we just had completed a huge survey and found green again still just in the last year still evokes the sense of health and help so yeah i have heard that green. yeah i've heard that not like yeah. a crazy dark green but a, a nice sage green. Uh, warm green yeah Perfect. There's, if you google psychology of color you can find some of these online mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's what I, anytime you're going to make a change in your office carpet walls just go look at it Okay, got it. So a holistic transformational process in your office. Okay, the patients for life process. Again, anybody here who's on 10X 360, anybody here who is platforming, this is coming. Um, this is our next marching orders. Heather Block and I um, are charged with pulling together the AMI material and the Cardinal Ventures material to push them together for this amazing patients for life process. And I'm gonna tell you, anybody who, who's been on recordings with our team, have to, they have four and five hours worth of recordings, yep. Randall, you did yours, right? Or Christy did it, okay. What we're doing is we're recording, we're looking for the best practices and recording, I think we're up to maybe eight or 10 offices, the whole patient journey. From the minute that they walk in the door 
to the minute that they are referring patients after discharge. That's the journey. I think so many of us look at our offices like, okay, our marketing department and getting new patients. That's what they do. And then there is the sales team, the case managers sell the programs. That's what they do. Then you got the treatment team, they deliver treatment. That's what they do. Then you discharge a patient and maybe you have a program to see them again and maybe you don't ever see them again. And that's our process. It's very transactional. We break the office up into those components. The Patients for Life process is a process that covers every step of your patient journey with your practice, from your marketing campaigns, to your telephone contact, to the staff interaction, the sales process, treatment delivery, discharge process, and con continued connection with the patient into the future. Now, this is something that Audigy had already created in the audiology space, okay? So the template is written in that space already. Heather and I will pull together the AMI. We're pulling best practices out of clients' offices, which means if we get to 10, 10, 15, 20 of these offices and then do site visits on there so we can actually observe the staff, what will happen is best practices will be written for answering the phones. Best practices are going to be written for the marketing that, that what is your marketing saying and is the promise being fulfilled inside the office? Because remember, your marketing people, which I know this is a marketing uh, uh, weekend, it's not just the written material. I think we're all, we would all be amazed what people, we take our staff out to do events and what they promise people. They're talking to somebody who's new and the person who's new is talking about their, their big toe that hurts and da, 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 da. And they're going, oh, we help big toes. Yeah, yeah, we can do <laughs> stem cells and da, da, da. So the person comes in and says, I want stem cell in my big toe. And the, and the medical person is like, they've got gout. How did this, even, how did this person make this promise? Because we have this enormous disconnect from when we're out marketing for patients, we think all we need to do is push them in the door, say whatever it takes, which means promise whatever it takes. And when they get in the door, the poor office staff gets handed people with promises that they can't fulfill. That's the disconnect between marketing and the office. This patients for life process is gonna be a whole process. And then what happens is there's gonna be weekends that train on this, that we come together and train the whole process. I think we all have a bunch of systems. We all have scripts, right? A script for answering the phone, a script for scheduling at an event, um, a script for this, a script for that, and a script for that. The scripts are useless without the human being, the human element that follows through with the script, that connects with the person, that actually can translate the journey that they're going to experience in the office and make promises that can be fulfilled. I think that's where all of us struggle because we're not, as we try and move from transitional to transformative, we're struggling with pulling this together and taking, looking at our practice as one whole practice and not components of the practice. And that's where this weekend with Buck and Bobby, Buck thinks this way, transformational for marketing for Cardone Ventures. That's, he is talking from that viewpoint because that's how Cardone Ventures runs. Bobby understands that we all grew up. I mean, you guys are doctors, right? You didn't go to school for marketing. So you grew up and figured out what you know by just asking people and learning from mistakes. So it's very hard to be transformational when you're growing up from the bottom up. Well, the idea is that Buck and Bobby are gonna be up here. Remember your belief lid? They're gonna raise your belief lid that you can be transformational. And then they're gonna show you the path to take it there, to be there. And that's the, the start is this weekend with your marketing. Okay, a transformational marketing campaign. Your transformational marketing campaign must translate your customer experience through videos, pictures, colors and wording in a large enough quantity to fill your practice with enough qualified prospects who need your services and have the ability to monetarily exchange for these services. Now I wrote this based upon coming off of the Cardone Ventures material and the pain points. This was written before we all talked. That last line there, I think we can all agree. Not sure how so many, at least in our office, Medicaid patients show up. We swear we don't market to these people right? But they seem to arrive anyway. So we need to fill our offices with a large enough quantity of patients who need our services and can also either qualify for financing or qualify to pay for the services. Okay, so now I'm going to get more nuts and bolts with you guys. I want to get a little more, because now we talked about big picture, right? Being trans transformative. But we got to get real here and go, okay, to become transformative, I still need to run my practice. And the biggest question that happens is, 
I've got a certain amount of money to spend, which Buck this morning asked people how much they were spending. I have a certain amount of money to spend, and I need a certain number of patients to bring in the door to be to grow and meet my benchmarks, my quarterly benchmarks. So just estimation of budget is, estimated budget for marketing is 10% of the monthly income. Usually you look at the previous month's income. So for instance, if an office collects 200,000 a month, then this office would spend approximately 20,000 on their marketing campaigns. If an office collects 400,000 a month, then they would spend about 40,000 on their marketing campaigns. Just a rule of thumb. Okay, how many new patients do I think I need to meet my financial benchmarks? Once a practice owner knows the number of new patients needed to grow the practice, then the practice can move into action, putting in place the activities needed to acquire the needed number of new patients. The concept is pretty easy to calculate. And I'm gonna get the next slide, I'm gonna to get to that. I wanna bring up this. One thing Bobby and Buck are doing right now, okay, is they're talking about um, different types of campaigns, uh, paid campaigns, TV, uh, direct mailers, Facebook, but then they also are gonna be talking about Google AdWords, Google Map, social media presence, right? Because a transformative type of practice takes their what would seem like transactional paid marketing and they envelope it into this message to the public, which makes that marketing work much better when you have the, I don't even know what you call, what do you call the, um, uh, your Google reviews, your Google, uh, earned. is that earned? Yeah. Okay, so you maximize your paid by maximizing your earned. That's the whole goal of paid, is not just to have paid to create traffic, but to actually get more earned and owned. Mm -hmm. So it's multiplying itself. And you're help, that's this weekend, you're yeah. helping that, right? Yeah. I think, I know for us, I can t talk for Shalin and Haley back there, we're not born marketers. So some of this stuff is, I know for you guys, it's like super simple, but some of this stuff, like we try it and you don't really realize if it's working or not, so you stop it and then you kind of do it and then you kind of don't do it. But we, the understanding now that the earned campaigns have to stay at a high enough level and consistency, Karen, so that people know you're there, right? To have anybody walk in your office and go, I didn't even know you were there, still happens to us. It's because our earned campaigns are probably not big enough or consistent enough that we're omnipresent. And then once you are omnipresent and they get that letter in the mail, right? They get that, that, that postcard in the mail or that Facebook ad, they know you and they already trust you because you're omnipresent. Yeah, now right? it's actually, I think, 54 touch points before they'll make a decision to trust you to go into your office. It used to be like seven. Wow. That's multiplied now. Wow. I mean.